my friend. I'm glad to see you made it. For I have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. Today we're at part two of our little Bible study of going over all the book of Revelations, chapters 11. Uh, a little bit of the unveiling of, of the two witnesses. The unveiling of Jesus Christ. The unveiling of, of God's children. And so here we are at verse 11 or verse 12 of the book of Acts chapters 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room, and they were staying, where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip, and Thomas, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these, with one accord, were devoted, devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women, Mary, and the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was about 120. So, and all together, there, there, there's a, like 120 people all staying in this one room or, or this one place. And I don't know, I guess like a, like a little uh, homemade church or, or homemade little commune type living. 120 people in all. Peter stands up and says, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. Right? And so that's the thing in our world is we come to see and through the book of Revelations, what's going on in a spiritual realm, that, that Satan entered into Judas, right? Everything that was going on in heaven and the spiritual realm now become a reality in the physical realm in, in our world. The Word of God became flesh, right? And, and Judas, the spirit of Satan enters Judas and, and Judas becomes a guide to the destruction of Jesus Christ. Right? And, and so we see what, what, what does Satan use and what are the tools Satan uses. And, and he can use you to, to be a guide to the destruction of, of Jesus Christ. Right? Using an outside source as your savior, or an outside source as your sense of peace, an outside source of your happiness. Right? Outside source. Outside of God. Outside of our Father. Outside of our salvation. Outside of our healer. And as we see with John, he is a guide to salvation. Jesus, or Judas is a guide to destruction. Right? John says, and it prepares a way, a straight path to the Lord. Right? And so Jesus, who follows the instructions of John to the fullest, or the instructions of the Torah, or the instructions of the prophets. And what is it? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love as I have loved you. I come to be the perfect example, the representation of the perfect Father. Love as I have loved you. If we take away the example by which Jesus Christ lived, how can I become likened unto him? This is how you will be saved to the transformation of your life is your coming to the likeness of Christ. Love is as I have loved you. 
love perfectly, Jesus says. As God loves perfectly. Right? Why am I outside of peace? What am I warring against? You are perfectly made, wonderfully made, and when God made you, he had tremble in his fingers. Because he, he knew you were one in 400 trillion. And he wanted it perfect. And the devil and addictions to things and stuff takes away, takes away your worth, takes away your, your value. And, and then it, it sends you down to a place of destruction. And, and what do we see when Judas hands Christ over to those? Right? A loss of value. A loss of value of human life. Right? And sometimes if the war is within us, I have lost all value of my life. Why does Judas hang himself? Because he wanted to be God. God didn't have to hang himself. He didn't have to prove who he was. He just lived it out. And everybody else proved he was God through their actions. Right? Only God can save you. The actions of men and, and that of this world is tainted to a place where, where they're going to be overcome by death. And those who are willing to follow through God's will. Right? aren't fighting the war anymore. They don't have to prove I'm worthy. They don't have to prove they belong. They don't have to prove that they value. Right? He says, Judas was a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now, this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, or being hanged, he burst open in the middle, and his bowels gushed out. And everybody knew about this. Hung himself there in the middle of town, and they left him hanging there so long. His bowels burst open. And so they took the money that, that he threw back into the temple, those 30 pieces of silver, which he used to betray his master, to, to buy that field. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the field was called in their own language, al kadama that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, may his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it. Right. So, Jesus says that the entire world will be deceived by, by the image of the mark, the, the image of the beast, and his name. And, and everything that, that has been deceived by him will be thrown in, into the lake of fire. Right? And, and will be destroyed. And everything that, that is written in, in the Lamb's book of life will, will be saved. Let his land, he's, he's full of Satan, be desolate. Desolate. What, what, what if everything is in the lake of fire? What's left? What's left? Us. Life. Because the work of God is finished. 
Let his land be desolate. Right? Satan enters Judas. And Jesus throws Judas in. And Satan he says, hey, I wish you had never been born, but so the word of God may be fulfilled in reality and in flesh. In the same way it has been fulfilled before the creation of all the world so that you may believe that you are God's creation. You are God's children. Right? The fire falls from heaven into Jerusalem. And begins in Jerusalem to spread out. The Jews first, and then to the Gentiles. And then it spreads out, and then all of a sudden there's a person like Cortez. Cortez pulls into to the Mexico City. And there, the, in Mexico, you have the Aztec Empire, and people are sacrificing human beings to what they say was God. And, but in reality, what they were saying is, Look, God, I hold the power of life and death. And if these are your children, God, come down and save them. And then rain would come, and rain would water the land. And within 30 days, smallpox wiped them out. And then Mexico City is now populated by 20 million people who all worship Jesus Christ. Life, love, liberty, and justice. God is with us. <laughs> See you next time.